this is the last part of our discussion about convexity after that we will uh, go and study optimality conditions which are uh, very essential so for economics of course so here we are going to study today the supporting hyperplane theorem the supporting hyperplane theorem is a crucial idea which says that if you have a closed convex set and a point in the boundary and through that point i can draw any hyperplane i like of course some hyperplanes will cut through the set some hyperplanes will not so there will be at least one hyperplane which will not cut through the set in the set it will pass through p but in such a way that the set itself lies in one of the half spaces right so if you take a non empty closed convex set we assume that it is an interior and let x star be a point on the boundary then i can find a vector p not equal to 0 such that the inner product of p with x is less than equal to inner product of p with x star for any x in c so if you put p of x star equal to alpha and consider the set of all z such that pz is equal to alpha with if you take that as a hyperplane then what for at least in this in our proof what on our theorem we say that the set c lies in the lower half space by lower half space of the hyperplane which passes through x star because if any hyperplane which passes through x star then p of the, if it passes through x star then p of x star is equal to alpha which we have taken so that's the clear idea so there will be at least one hyperplane which will keep the whole set in one of the sides right so how do we prove it now what happens if you take a point on the boundary if you draw any take a any ball around it a part of the ball will intersect the set and the part of the ball will not intersect the set it will intersect the complement so there will be always a point in that ball which is not in the boundary may not in the set sorry so what i do i start by taking a ball with center x star which is in the boundary part of radius delta 1 so and then there is a ball x1 But then there is element x one which is in the ball but not in the set. Similarly, I take delta two which is smaller than delta one, and then in that smaller ball I'll find another x two which is in inside the ball but not in the set. So I'll keep on having a chain of x one, x two, x k outside the closed set. All are finally converging to C, and I can take choose delta one, delta two in such a way that they decrease to zero. now what happens we can apply what we have learned before that for each of those x k's they are outside the set and hence we can have a strict separation that for each of these k's there is an x k in rn x k not equal to 0 for which this will happen now there is a mistake this is not sk there there has to be P, pk i made a mistake of it there this is pk please consider please change this to pk 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 so this will be pk uh, so for every k there is a pk element of rn pk not equal to 0 so that this happens now choose pk to be pk now choose uh, this should be uh, sorry there is a mistake here i don't think so sk is correct here actually here is the mistake so pk would be xk by norm of xk right that is the mistake sorry so here we have chosen sk so there exists an sk so for every k such that this happens right for now you choose because what happens we will ultimately look at the convergence of this now i do not know where does sk go i know that xk goes to x star but i do not know where does xk goes and x is of course an element in c this is a strict separation so with every c every xk there is a strict separation of c and sk is generating that strict separation now you write pk is sk by norm p sk not pk by norm pk pk there is no pk now once you done that this pk becomes a bounded sequence Because S K by norm S K as the norm P K is uh, 
1 and so pk has a subsequence pkj which converges to p and it is clear that norm pk equal to 1 because norm being a continuous function the limit and the function is exchangeable and hence norm p is not equal to 0. Now from this 25 because uh, norm of xk is non-zero because none of the vectors xk is zero I can divide both sides by norm of xk without changing the strict inequality. Once I do that I will can write for every such subsequence I can write so instead of this I can write you know xkj strictly less than xkj xkj this will also happen. So divided by norm of Basically, if I divide it by norm of xk, this will become pkx greater strictly greater than pkxk. So, what would happen when I take, I can just take the whole, the inequality is only for the subsequence. So, here it will be a strict inequality, strict, not less than equal to, strict inequality. Please, when you see some printing mistakes, let me know. Even I am telling it for the student, but if there is some other uh, uh, viewer who is saying, I can put it in the comments. So, this is not, what we have simply done is that, we have divided first xk by norm xk, replaced this by pks. Then we have taken those, we have written the inequality 25 only for those elements of the subsequence which is going to some p, pkj going to p. xkj will anyway go to xk, right. So now when you take j tends to infinity, you have px less than equal to px star. So this is true for all x in c because we have, this, this, because these equations are true for all x in c and this completes the proof. The proof is very simple, not much. See how you see how Boltzmann and Weierstrass theorem comes repeatedly and repeatedly and repeatedly. This shows what a powerful result it is. So these are all in some cases a very silent celebration of the Boltzmann and Weierstrass theorem. Now you might be thinking that okay, this guy is only talking about uh, closed sets, compact sets. What about if the, com open, con the set uh, is open, the convex set is open, and suppose instead of having a but suppose it has it is another closed set whose boundary touches the boundary of that open set. The, in the open set the boundary is not considered a part of the set. So let let there be a closed convex set which touches the boundary of the open set. So then also the open set and the boundary the closed convex set does not have an intersection. What does it what does it mean by a separation theorem there? So through that point where suppose that it just touches at one point, I can always find a hyperplane which will separate them two but not strictly because they will be put into two different half spaces but one of the sets, at least the closed set will be touching the boundary of the hyper half hyperplane that is a point on the, at least one point on the closed set will lie on the hyperplane, right. But it and but the set will remain on the one side. It will not come to the side of the open set. So if there is an open set and there is a say a closed convex set where the closed convex set is touching the boundary of the open set, how do I do it? That's that's the key key idea. Uh, that's what one should think about. So now this comes through a result. So this is a very general situation now. Now this comes through a result called Adel height separation theorem, which is essentially done in infinite dimension, the proofs are given in the final notes, which I think I have already given you. So here we, I'll try to correct the notes and send it to you again. So here is that result with which we end this uh, discussion on convexity. So let C1 and C2 be two convex sets in Rn with C1 having non-empty interior. And the, and the convex set C2 can be anything. You can in take your, in your mind a closed set, closed convex set. The interior of C1 does not intersect C2. So the interior of C1 is a convex set and interior and C2 is a convex set. So if C1 is a convex set, its interior is also a convex set. So interior is an open convex set. So that open convex set does not intersect the set C2. Then there exists a P for which this happens. So I am writing in terms of sup and in, this is the most general way to write separation theorems. But there, what does it mean finally that? there exists at least an alpha such the soup of x element of c1 px is less than equal to alpha less than equal to info of this. So this simply tells us that this is there is a separation that we can always find a hyperplane but may not be able to find a strict hyperplane because the equality comes in.
for for example if uh, i want to look at this theorem now here when one is closed and one one is closed one is non empty and compact this theorem if i take the supremum here i fix one x here doesn't matter and then this is true for all z in c2 then if i take the supremum here the supremum is less than equal to beta okay and beta is strictly less than equal to px so the supremum is which is over c2 is strictly would not be less than equal to would be strictly less than beta because c2 is compact because c2 is compact there must be a z star such that p z star equal to the supremum but p z star is strictly less than beta so the supremum of p z z element of c2 is strictly less than beta while if you take the infimum over all x element of c1 then the infimum would be greater than or equal to beta so finally what you will have supremum of pz would be strictly less than the infimum of px where x belongs to c1 and here z belongs to c2 the compactness plays a role in maintaining this strictness and hence maintaining the strict separation theorem but here there is no compactness and hence the strict separation the strict thing will not be maintained but only this will be maintained only this strict level less than equality type inequality would be maintained so let us have a references badara uh, shetty sharali is a good source for studying all this in among this whole references whole study that we made about convexity derivatives optimization fletcher's book is a good one and this is for this is a fantastic book very well written very good for economists and also mathematicians this is a fantastic game theory book which we took the proof of the uh, i just wanted to present the proof from there because the proof was very elegant there is many other ways to present the proof but this is what i found very elegant so in rk sundaram books uh, which which uh, this is a very good extremely important book which an uh, economic theorist anybody who is in economic theory must have thank you very much and we will continue with our next a discussion on constraint optimization and the multiplier rules thank you once again have a nice evening